So you want to buy a used Tesla Model S. I recently bought this 2020 Tesla Model S and I wish I had a comprehensive video like the one I'm about to do right now that's going to tell you all the changes, all the facelift updates, all the tech changes, all the performance changes to make sure you don't overpay for outdated tech and get the best value and bang for your buck in performance for your Model S. We're gonna go through everything and there's even gonna be some Easter eggs at the end so make sure you stick around as we get into it with the original OG version in 2012. The original Model S launched with a different front end, was only rear wheel drive and only had a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. That was the base 60. It had 302 horsepower and it went zero to 60 in 5.9 seconds and the range was 208 miles. Then came the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack. That increased horsepower up to 362. It was still only rear wheel drive and it came in at zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds with 265 miles of range. Then came the P85. 416 horsepower in zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds. The key features on this early OG era car were that nose cone front fascia, the Gen 1 seats, and it had analog gauges. It also had an MCU-1, which was a very, very slow touchscreen by today's standards. You can pick these up for anywhere between eight to $27,000, depending on how many miles, what features you got, and whether it was a performance model, hence the P85. Just two short years later, there were two big improvements. In late 2014, Tesla introduced that Autopilot One hardware, or HW1 Hardware One. It's basic, it's one camera, it's mounted above the mirror in the front. It did have radar and ultrasonic sensors as well, but it was basic, but it worked. If you want any Autopilot, make sure you buy a car that was built in September or later 2014. Tesla also released the dual motor, which was huge. The 85D made 417 horsepower and went zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. And it had up to 270 miles of range. We're knocking on the door of 300 here in this 2014 to 2016 section here. The P85D you ask, that beast made 691 horsepower and went zero to 60 in a neck snapping 3.2 seconds. The styling was still that nose cone first gen. It also had those projector LED headlights. The seats did get a little bit better and it had a lot of chrome trim. You can pick these up today anywhere between 15,000 to 32,000 and it's kind of called that pre-refresh genre. Now we're getting into the facelift era. This front bumper on my vehicle is the exact same front bumper that came on the 2016 model when they launched the facelift cars. In April of 2016, Tesla gave the Model S its first major facelift. A new smooth front bumper, it had LED headlights and subtle interior tweaks. A few months later, they added hardware to autopilot, which included cameras up here, in the doors on the side, and also in the pillars over here. This era also brought ludicrous mode. The P100D delivered 762 horsepower and went zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds and had 315 miles of range. The 100D, which is the long range champ, had 335 miles of range and went zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. These facelift models still had the old MCU-1 touchscreen that started in 2014. The price on these today can be had for under 20,000 and all the way up to around 35,000 depending on the price and mileage that you get. Now we get to this one, the Raven refresh. It wasn't much of an exterior refresh as much as a under the hood, the suspension, the motors, the battery, the touchscreen, and so much more. In 2019, the Raven update came out and it was a massive leap. It brought the induction rear motor from the Model 3 and new adaptive air suspension. 
The MCU2, which is that touch screen in the center of the car, became standard. It gave you Netflix, it gave you YouTube, it gave you games that you could play in the car while you were charging. The Long Range Raven offered 373 miles of range and went zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. They started calling it the Long Range instead of the 100D. It had an upgraded 100 kilowatt hour battery pack as well as dual motors. The Performance Raven hit 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds with ludicrous plus mode and 778 foot pounds of torque. You also got Hardware 3. This was better cameras and a better processing unit for autopilot. This was the first full self driving capable Tesla. The Raven ran from post April 2019 all the way to mid 2021. Here's time for an Easter egg. In June of 2020, they changed the interior hardware on the charging cable so you could charge at 250 kilowatt hours on a Tesla supercharger. So if you're looking for that max speed that you can do on these vehicles, make sure you get a June 2020 or later build for this car. You can find Raven models from the low 20s all the way up to the high 30s and even still approaching $40,000, which I would not recommend. I'd try to get one in the low 30s or even in the high 20s for this model. After the Raven came the Palladium Refresh in mid-2021. This one was a bit controversial because Tesla started shipping the yoke and landscape display. You no longer had the vertical MCU2 display. You're now onto MCU3. It also had the yoke steering wheel as standard and you had to actually option the round steering wheel. Another controversial thing, no more stocks. With Palladium, you now had to push buttons on the steering wheel to operate the horn, operate the turn signals, and operate the wipers. There were no stocks in the car anymore. The big news here was the Tesla Model S Plaid. The tri-motor 1,000 horsepower beat anything off the stoplight on the street. It was absolutely crazy. It also had improved HVAC with a heat pump, revised user interface, and much better interior materials. The MCU-3, or MCU-Z as they called it, runs an AMD Ryzen processor. When you're potentially looking at a Palladium Tesla, go in, check the software, and find out how many gigabytes of RAM that AMD actually has. The long range Palladium had 405 miles of range and 670 horsepower. This 2020 long range only had 560 horsepower. It still ran an 11 in the quarter mile, but this new long range Palladium runs a 10 second quarter mile. And now you get to the Plaid, which runs an eight second quarter mile in the right conditions and on the right tires. 1,020 horsepower and 396 miles of range, depending on your tire diameter. Tesla was also quick to refresh some key features of the car in mid-2022. You got the Matrix LED headlights. You also got a new charge port door that swung up, similar to the Model Y and Model 3 instead of the side swinging port like I have. Then in March 2023, Tesla introduced Hardware 4. This upgraded all of the camera's resolutions. It updated the processor as well. And these cars can be had if you get an earlier prior refresh to the headlights and taillight palladium. You can pick those up from about 30,000 all the way up to 45,000 now for a Model S Plaid. A thousand horsepower car in $40,000. What is the world coming to? The post refresh version with the matrix LED headlights can be had for anywhere between 38 to all the way up to 70 plus thousand dollars, depending on mileage and everything like that. The new 2025 Model S has a very, very minor refresh. There's not much going on here. Range has increased to 410 miles thanks to some improved aerodynamics on the front bumper and some new wheel designs. They also did ambient lighting on the inside as well as a front bumper camera to add to the autopilot system. 
That's something I should also mention. When they went to those new headlights in 2022, they also got rid of the ultrasonic sensors and radar sensors. It was all vision with hardware four. So just to recap, and I'll put all this on the screen so you might wanna pause it now, 2012 to 2014 was that OG era. 2014 to 2016 introduced the dual motors as well as hardware one with one camera, radar, and ultrasonic sensors. 2016 to 2018 was that pre-Raven facelift with the nice new front bumper, the dual motors, the P100D, the increased battery size, but you still had that MCU-1 hardware, which is retrofitable if you want to upgrade to the MCU-2 hardware that's in my Raven. In 2019, post-April, make sure you get a post-April if you do want a Raven, they upgraded the motor to give it true one-pedal driving. They upgraded the hardware to Hardware 3. You also got air suspension, and you also got over 400 miles of range, as well as the P100D with ludicrous mode. The Palladium series came in late 2021 and went through 2022 before the Palladium Plus with those headlight and taillight refreshes. That jumped the horsepower of the base model to 670 horsepower and ran a 10 second quarter mile. If you're on a budget and want to get into a Model S for cheap, I would recommend that 2016 to early 2019 car, right before the Raven. There was a huge jump in the Raven and it pushes it well into the 20s. Uh, for price for even one with high mileage. All of these cars, mind you, come with an eight year or 150,000 mile motor and battery warranty. If you're looking for something a little bit more luxurious with air ride suspension, a little bit better full self-driving hardware and cameras and capability, as well as horsepower to match, the Raven is a fantastic choice. And I think this is really the sweet spot of the Model S lineup which is why I bought my 2020. If you're looking for even more power and you wanna punch above your weight class into the 670 horsepower range running a 10 second quarter mile, the Palladium early years are great. Now you also have the Plaid. Sure, you could buy an older P100D Raven, but they do have coolant issues with the rear large drive unit. Make sure you check that out before you get into that. For mid 30s all the way to high 70s, you can get, it, depending on the model, Long Ranger Plaid, you can get a Palladium for very good money. Positives are more power and a different screen with an upgraded interior experience. Drawbacks are you don't have turn signal stocks if you still like those. The Palladium Plus, uh, those matrix LED headlights are really cool. We'll put a video up right now of those going to work on the road. It's basically your brights are on all the time, but then the pixels turn off when there's a car coming at you or you're following another car. The hardware four upgrade is huge. If you're looking for supervised full self-driving capability that could potentially go unsupervised supervised in the future, they will need at least level four to make that happen. The newest refresh is really uh, kind of lackluster. A new front camera, some interior ambient lighting that can change color. Mine has interior lighting, it's just white all the time. But here's the checklist you wanna go through before you buy. Confirm the MCU version, the main center touchscreen. What version do you have? MCU one, MCU two, or MCU three slash Z? Know the autopilot hardware. 2014, it came out with hardware one, which was one front camera and some sensors. 2019 was a huge jump again with the Raven, which has multiple cameras as well as a new processor unit for hardware three. Then Palladium Plus was hardware four. Inspect what seat generation you had. Generation three seats came out in late 2016. It's what I have in the Raven. And that's another Palladium feature that I forgot to mention is you now get cooled seats, not just heated seats in the Palladium model starting in mid 2021. And that brings us to today where you can get a brand new Model S for somewhere around 85 to a little bit over $100,000. I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive video. If I missed anything that you think you should be in the next video, put that down in the comments below. I hope this video answered all your questions and I can't wait to put out some more Tesla content as well as some probably V8 content on this lift here. But make sure you follow these guidelines to make sure you don't buy a lemon and put your vehicle on one of these lifts. Thanks so much for watching Detached Garage and I hope to catch you on the next episode.